Bonsoir. Today I'm gonna cover up the recap of 2022. So today is actually a very special day. Today is the second birthday of Is Pharmacology Difficult podcast. And I have a wonderful celebration awaiting today at this podcast for everyone, each and everyone who is listening to me today. But, but, I have one thing to tell you before we actually get into the real mood of celebration. Nothing can be a better kickstart to today's Correro but a parlay of pharmacology. So, welcome all to this Pharmacology Difficult Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Radhika Vijay, MBBS MD, Pharmacology, and this is the audio hub to get the best, simplified basic tips, strategies, methods, and lots of ideas to learn better, understand better, and make your concepts crystal clear. If you really find, and if there's a question hovering in your minds, is pharmacology difficult? Lend me your ears for a while and let in the magic of knowledge. So I will be giving a real nice list and classification of adrenergic drugs today to start off the conversation. I know classifications, they are the basis of any good great topic, especially in pharmacology and the form the ice breaking step of each and every chapter that you might have seen in every book. So why not here? Though we have talked a lot about the sympathetic drugs already and their receptors also, before I truly dive deep in the individual drugs convo, I'd love to have a good old chin wag about their status, classification, listing, etc. No more hanging fire, let's get going on this. The classification of adrenergic drugs consists of three major heads. They are directly acting drugs, secondly indirectly acting drugs, and then we have mixed acting drugs. So, now what are the directly acting drugs? What do I mean by directly acting? That means their action, whether presynaptic or postsynaptic, it will be directly acting. That is directly on the adrenergic receptors like alpha or beta. Now again, I'm repeating since their action is direct, any kind of denervation of the postganglionic neuron or any such kind of mishaps will not prevent their action they will be acting no matter there's denervation no matter there is any other similar kind of a problem but since their action is direct their effects will be seen among these they are two subheads catecholamines or non-catecholamines the catecholamines they comprise of either endogenous catecholamines or exogenous catecholamines. You understand endogenous which are found in the body like adrenaline, noradrenaline and dopamine. Then we have exogenous which has to be given exogenously in any kind of situation. They are not produced inside the body and these are dobutamine, phenaldepam, isoprenaline and topexamine. So these were the two kinds of catecholamines, exogenous and endogenous. What are the non-catecholamines? They are the phenylephrine, clonidine, xylometazoline, methoxamine, etc. Now this was a brief intro about the directly acting drugs. Coming over to the second group of drugs, that is the indirectly acting drugs. Their action is actually totally contrast of the directly acting drugs. And what is it exactly? Firstly, they are stored inside the neuron in the vesicles. And this is the process of storage that occurs after they are reuptaken. You remember something we did very long back, something known as uptake one. So we are the process of uptake one they are reuptaken and they are stored in the vesicles in the neuron. 
But for your kind information, the bicycles they already contain norepinephrine. And once these indirectly acting drugs they are reuptaken, they actually displace the norepinephrine and they are stored inside the bicycles. If the norepinephrine is displaced, it actually will be released inside the synapse. And when it is released in the synapse, it may act on the sympathetic receptors, either pre or post synaptic receptors. Now, you can actually get the whole view if you really understand or imagine the whole phenomena. It is pretty indirectly acting. And that is the reason why if there is any sort of denervation of the postganglionic neuron, it will badly affect this whole functioning. Yes, it will have a real adverse effect. It will actually prevent the functioning of the indirectly acting drugs. These drugs, they have another important feature. If they are constantly given at small duration of time, a sort of acute tolerance starts building up. And this is famously known as tachyphylaxis, T-A-C-H-Y-P-H-Y-L-A-X-I-S. And what is the reason of this tachyphylaxis? It is actually a gradual and total displacement of the norepinephrine from the neuronal vesicles. But such phenomena are actually not at all a part of a study of the directly acting drugs. That is, they never happen in case of directly acting drugs. Now, these indirectly acting drugs, what are their names? They are divided into two heads. They can be reuptake inhibitors like cocaine and capital TCA, that is tricyclic antidepressants. And the second group comprises of the drugs which act by displacement and these are modafinil, methylphenitate and amphetamines. So these were the names of the indirectly acting drugs. Coming over to our last group of drugs that is for the day. These are the mixed acting drugs and since they are known as mixed acting drugs, their action will be mixed. Their routes can be direct or they can be indirect. That is, they can act directly on the adrenergic receptors, alpha and beta, while they can also displace the norepinephrine from the vesicular stores. What are the good to know names of these agents? Well, these are ephedrine, pseudoephedrine, and mephentermine. Now, I'm gonna limit my pharmacology confab till here only. But wait, while now all of you are heartily invited to the schmooze all about celebrating the day, the born anniversary of Is Pharmacology Difficult podcast. What are the party rules? First rule, this is a virtual jamboree and it should be followed by the dinner at your own home. There is no treat from the host in. Secondly, it's a safe merrymaking since there are no firecrackers, no lights, no candles. Third, for a moment while I narrate the cake cutting, everybody who is listening, they are advised to imagine and relive the best and the most delicious cake and dessert they had last. And fourthly, a shout out will be given to the bestest raving fans while the ones that are not called upon should also and should definitely acknowledge the Thanksgiving jollification and also my heartiest gratitude. So these are the four party rules and now let's jump in. To begin with, I'm cutting a delicious pretty black forest cake topped up with red shiny cherries having a decorated tag of happy birthday let's applaud secondly i have taken out my fan list of my tribe who have supported and appreciated me especially throughout the anam 2022 so today is 12th of december 2022 and till date 
the podcast downloads had been much beyond than 6k that is 6000 plus including today's episode the total episodes have been 134 and now you will be very surprised to get to know that the stats of the specific regions and the apps they are very very different from the last year's stats let me reveal the top five countries among the 108 countries that have been listening my podcast the first one is usa secondly my own country my home country that is india then we have on third position we have united kingdom on the fourth place we have canada and on the fifth place we have australia so these are the top five countries where the podcast has been most listened throughout this annum till date what are the top cities i know you all are very very anxious to know the top five cities well the first one is from my own home country that is jaipur the second one is afrator derbyshire the third one is from my own home country that is pune maharashtra then we have sharing a tie with pune is kampala and then we have Palmer's region and Houston, Texas on the fourth and fifth positions respectively. As far as the apps are concerned, you all have been mostly following the Google podcast, followed by Spotify, Apple apps, Catchbox and Apple podcasts. Till date. The topmost episode that ha- you all have appreciated amongst the last 20 episodes has been the revision of the entire cholinergic drugs. I never knew it was just a kind of a wild guess that it was a wild card that I actually practiced just without any kind of a planning and I never knew it gonna turn up into the most topmost listenable episode of the year i'm talking about the last 20 episodes not the all-time episodes and the second one was the atropine substitutes number five that is atropine poisoning so that was also much loved and appreciated well what do you expect from my end mercy it thus thank you all i'm so highly grateful to all of you for your support your company your acknowledgement and your continuous listening activity so just a little request continue a silvu play please keep it up for all the updates and latest episodes of my podcast you visit www.spharmacologydifficult.com where you can also sign up for a free monthly e-newsletter of mine it actually contains a lot of updates about medical sciences, drug information updates, and my podcast updates also. You can follow me on different social media handles like Twitter, Insta, Facebook, and LinkedIn. They all are with the same name as Pharmacology Difficult. If you're listening for the first time, do subscribe and follow whatever platform you are consuming this episode. Stay tuned. Do rate and review on iTunes, Apple Podcast. Stay safe. Stay happy. Stay enlightened. Thank you.